use when it comes to public lands, but how did this partnership come together? Well, I think after I got elected, I think I called Phil up and said, hey, do you think we might have some common ground here on a visitor center about the, for the Bears Ears Monument, the Bears Ears area? And uh, we got talking and it looked like we did have some common ground. I think that's kind of how it got off the ground. Representative Lyman, how did, uh, how did you approach this and, and how did you find common ground in well, this situation? Well, you know, uh, Bears Ears is in my backyard. I love those pictures uh, at, the, at the start there. Um, that's home to me, and um, so when, when uh, Representative Owens called me and, and suggested that maybe we, we should do this together, I was, I was really pleased that he would invite me to the, to the table on it, and it's been a, it's been a, great, it's been a great process getting to know uh, Doug and his, and his wife and, and making a couple of trips down to, to that area, and, uh, and all in all, it's just, it's just been a good, a good experience working with, uh, with Doug on this. Mm -hmm. I remember going down to Blanding a few years ago when Secretary Zinke came down to visit the area. I, right. I talked with you at that time, Representative Lyman. Uh, you all are passionate about this issue down in Blanding. Talk about why. Well, you know, we, we're passionate about the landscape. We're passionate about the cultures. We're passionate about the, uh, you know, living there and raising our kids there. Uh, we, we always felt like a national monument was the wrong tool to protect 1.9 million or 1.3 million or 200,000 acres, whatever we're talking about. I mean, at the, we're talking about 3,000 square miles of, of, of national monument. And, uh, and, and the, uh, the people felt like a better protection for that would have been a national recreation area, something with, or a national conservation area, something with a little lower profile that would bring fewer people to trample on the area. But we've got a national monument. It's done with an executive order. And so we, the, the, the point that we've made and that I've talked with Representative Owens about is if we're going to, if the federal government is going to take control over a large swath of ground, they should also take some responsibility for it. And that's what got us together. I think that's where we come together on this, on this uh, Bears Ears Visitors mm -hmm. Center. So. Representative Owens, talk uh, a little bit about your perspective. Uh, you live in Salt Lake County, uh, but w how important are the voices that are closest to the land and, and how do you balance that with other demanding uh, issues that uh, come up from uh, other folks in the state as well? Those voices close to the land are very important, uh, and, and also, uh, in particular, the Indian tribes that had uh, been asking for that monument for years. Um, and so even though Representative Lyman and I didn't agree with the, each other on whether the monument should have been created and what its boundaries should be, we definitely can recognize that the visitation is increasing, that there's a spectacular culture and history and archaeolo archaeological resources that need to be showcased, deserve to be showcased, and that that can be a, a source of significant employment for the tribes and, a, and an economic boost for San Juan County. And so that's the basis for us getting together and talking, even though we did have those differences, there's definitely a lot of common ground and hope that uh, this, this friendship can uh, work together for the good of the, the tribes and the people of San Juan County and the whole state. Okay, let's dig into that a little more. What exactly does this uh, bill do? We're talking about the visitor center here. But uh, my understanding is it creates an advisory committee to look into this. Uh, Representative Lyman, how does that work? Well, when the monument was designated, uh, President Obama specified five tribes. And, and as we've kind of worked through the, the process on, on the bill and uh, talking about the, the makeup of that committee, we determined that it should be the five tribes that make up the committee, one member from each tribe. And the committee's job is to get together and, and um, make a plan that they can take to the federal government. Uh, we were able to get an appropriation for a, a master plan. And that's what Utah's saying is, hey, we'd like to help facilitate this when it's all done. They'll go, they'll, we'll have something to present at the federal level uh, to see if the federal government will, will again, take responsibility for what uh, they've created down there with the, with the monument or with the uh, visitor center, uh, cultural center. And that's kind of what, how we came to that point. Okay, so uh, Representative Owens, this uh, committee, advisory committee, will come up with the recommendation. But what would you like to see the end product? Well, being? Uh, as Representative Lyman said, the, the five tribes will decide where it should be, what its scope should be. We, our only hope is that they'll think big and, and, uh, and not, not, we don't envision it to be something that's just rest, a rest stop with a map stand and somebody asks questions, but something that could really be a treasure house of uh, tribal knowledge and lore and be a real showcase and an invitation to the public to understand the history of the area and tribal culture and 
so we, we want them to think big and we tried to give them the resources that would help them think big. But then after that, after that invitation from the state of Utah, it's mm -hmm. up to the tribes to decide what they'd like. Okay, so how, how soon could we see this potential visitor center open to the public? We hope it goes fast, but the, that'll be up to the tribes. This is uh, merely an invitation to give them the resources to begin a planning process. Okay, uh, talk a little, little bit about, uh, so, you, okay, let's, let's go this way. Uh, you say this is common ground for both of you with the visitor center. So is this just a step? Is there more in this partnership that uh, can come from this? Representative Lyman, let's start with you. Well, I think the visitor center is, has a pretty defined scope. Um, and this committee has a pretty defined scope. Uh, I've talked to, to Representative Owens a couple of times and I, I've really enjoyed this process of talking about things. You know, sometimes we, 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 we don't, we, we think there's some kind of a magic pill to, to address these things rather than sitting down and talking about it. And when, uh, when Doug and I sit down and talk about things, we find out that we agree on a lot. And so even, even though, you know, there's a lot of work to do on, the, on this committee, mm -hmm. Um, I, th I hope there's uh, future things that, uh, that so, Doug so and I So give can us an example. To. What things might uh, come out of this from the future as well, potentially? In terms of the... Uh, Mo the moving forward with other common ground initiatives. Oh, I don't know. That's a good question. Um, probably not gun control. <laughs> <laughs> you know, a there's, a few, there's a few things that we, that we probably won't see eye to eye on, but, mm -hmm. uh, but certainly when we talk about the culture and the landscape, I think that's... Uh, you know, Doug has, he's, he's got a, a different type of affinity for that, but mm -hmm. it's certainly a genuine affinity and I have a genuine affinity. So I think we'll, I think we'll talk a lot about that. So Representative Owens, where do you see this potentially going? Well, we have become friends and even though we don't see eye to eye on a bunch of issues, there were occasional times we voted together and uh, uh, Representative Lyman and his wife had us down, my wife and me, to stay with them. And we met with some tribal leaders to try to explain this invitation to the, to the tribes. Uh, I anticipate there'll be plenty of work making the, this uh, invitation known uh, going forward to the tribes mm -hmm. who are going to be involved in the decision making. So there, there'll be that piece of work. And I hope that as a Wasatch Front Democrat, we, I can work with a Southern Utah Republican like Representative Lyman to figure out how the state can uh, sh share more of its prosperity with rural Utah. I mean, that's mm -hmm. got to be a defining issue of our yeah, time. Yeah, seems like such a novel statement these days, right? Coming together between both parties. Uh, we have a minute left. I want to get both your thoughts on this real fast. Uh, executive order, every time the White House switches parties, we're seeing things change here. Uh, President Obama did what he did. Uh, President Trump came and uh, slashed the boundaries of that. And now President uh, Biden looking into that uh, once again. What good is it to continue to go back and forth ruling by executive order on public lands in the state of Utah? Representative Lyman. That's a big question for a short, for a short answer. Um, I guess I would say, I think we need to understand what a, what a state actually is. We're not a territory. We're not a federal territory. We get treated like that because we've got so much federal land. And I, I think we need to get right down to the basics of, of what is the jurisdictional uh, role of the state in, in with, on lands within the state of Utah. Uh, what is the Antiquities Act designed for? What are, what are its limitations, if any? And I think if anything that we've seen in the last uh, few years is that the, 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 uh, there are very few limitations on this. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a bad uh, policy direction for, for the executive to take. I think it, it causes a lot of feelings and problems. All right, real quick, uh, Representative Owens, your thoughts on the back and forth through executive order. Well, the Antiquities Act really I think we're going to find, in, when the, if the courts ever look at it, it really goes one direction. It's for the president. It enables the president to protect certain areas. We hope this visitor center will help complete that mission of protection for uh, the Bears Ears area. And, uh, but there, uh, to your larger issue, executive orders, I think there's been dysfunction in, in Washington for decades now with the parties butting heads instead of governing together. So the Congress becomes dysfunctional and it's up to the president to often to try to do what he can mm -hmm. by executive orders. And that, it, I think it's a symptom of political dysfunction. All right, gentlemen, we're going to have to uh, wrap it up on that note. Thank you for coming in and explaining uh, what your bill does. We appreciate your time.